All right, everyone. So good evening and welcome to our first episode of Doha's for the 2024 year. My name is Cahal and I'm part of the mental health and wellbeing group for the Irish Support Agency. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm hosting this webinar from the lands of the Gadigal people. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which you are all gathered to watch this webinar tonight. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Dohas will be brought to you on the first Monday of each month with each, each session exploring a different aspect of health and well-being. All of the sessions will be recorded and they'll be on our YouTube channel and we've also got a Spotify channel now, which you can find under the Irish Support Agency. And also all our old um, webinars are on it as well. <clears throat> if you have any questions throughout the, excuse me, <clears throat> if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please pop them in the chat box or send Una or myself a private message if you want to stay anonymous. So tonight we're going to be further reflecting on our relationship with alcohol. Last year, we done a webinar with three uh, speakers who uh, volunteered for us, and it was I think it was our most popular webinar last year. So we decided to, to revisit it again, and, and we most likely will be doing one, at least one per year from, from now on. So alcohol can not only affect our mental health, but it can also significantly impact our mental and emotional well-being. When the morning after comes, we all know that feeling are those thoughts all too well of the fear or anxiety, whatever you want to call it, and it can leave us questioning our relationship with alcohol. Some people drink just to improve their confidence, some to reduce social anxiety, some just to for the hell of it on a Saturday night. But excessive social drinking can lead to all sorts of problems and significantly impact our thoughts, feelings, emotions, behaviours. And it can also contribute to, if not develop, worsening mental health issues. So we'll get down to it. Hazel and Ali, thanks very much for joining us here tonight and volunteering your time. Hazel, we'll put you in the hot seat first, if that's all right with you. That's all good. So can you tell us a bit about your own story with alcohol? Yeah. So hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much to Irish Sport Agency for inviting me on. Um, I actually am really looking forward to this because I think I went from being the essential like party girl. I was out majority of Saturday nights um, throughout my like teenage years, 20s, between like college and socializing. And I always associated socializing with alcohol. One just went like hand in hand with the other. Um, and then I, I, I think as I moved over to Australia, you know, it, it kept on going um, and I never saw myself as having a problem until I came away from it. And um, so then I fully um, stopped drinking alcohol in October of 2022. Um, so just about a year and a half ago, there thereabouts. Um, and yeah, I feel all the benefits for it. Um, I, I, again, didn't think I had a problem till I probably look back on a lot of the times when I was drinking alcohol. Um, and one probably turning point was definitely, I, I spoke about this on my Instagram about, I went to a Dermot Kennedy concert and I literally do not remember the concert. And I think I scared myself um, with the aftermath of it because it wasn't just the following day. That following day turned into like a week, a month and that kind of black hole, you know, low feeling just didn't seem to disappear. Um, and I had to do a bit of self-assessment and say to myself, like, this is not normal. Like, you should not be feeling like this afterwards. Um, and yeah, that led me then to, you know, reconsider um, the way I socialized. And then from there, I then, you know, decided to give it up fully. Nice. So how long was it between when you, what was, was the Dermot Kennedy concert, was that, when you kind of first had the realization, right, I need to give it up. Maybe not give up, but I definitely knew I had something had to change. Um, I that was like July of twenty two, and then I went home then around that September, and um, back to Ireland of um twenty two, and it was our first time home since COVID, um, and the majority of my friends at home now are all either 
having a baby or just after having a baby. So the social scene is not what it used to be at all. And um, so it wasn't that hard when I went home um, to drink less or not drink at all. Like I had maybe one one or two weddings and um, I had a couple of drinks at those, but I definitely had decreased um, my intake at that stage. And then I got back to Australia then that October and I actually went to the Randwick races and um, there's a group of friends of ours and a friend, a very good friend of mine was there and um, she doesn't drink or had given it up about three or four years ago. And I was chewing the ear off her and um, that day I had only had one glass of Prosecco and I just was really intrigued as to how she had done it and her experience. Um, and then I had that one glass of Prosecco early on at the races that day. And then that was the last drink I drank. Um, I went home from the races that day and I said, do you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. And then that was it. Um, but I didn't um, set any kind of time frame on myself. I didn't say that day I'm finished forever. I just knew that I think that was definitely a turning point for me. Um, so after that, then I kind of challenged myself a bit and um, the November then was my birthday and I had a friend's hen party, which was actually going to a winery. And um, so I was like, right, if I can manage this, then I'll try the next one. And then we went to Byron Bay for Christmas um, and I actually had I, I started to realize that I was having more fun and um, not drinking than it was when I was drinking because I was enjoying the nights much more as more present. Uh, I was remembering them and um, I was able to get up the following morning. I was fresh. Um, and then everything just became clear from there. And yeah, I just have felt all the benefits since. Yeah, nice. So pretty fast transition, really. Yeah. Good on you. Yeah. How, do you find, how do you find the Irish weddings going home and uh, not drinking for those? Um, easier than you think. Um, I, we went to a wedding. I was home again um, just there last September and we went to a wedding down in Kerry. And I was actually the last one nearly like wanting to stay in the hotel and, you know, keep them going. You know, all the sandwiches are out at that stage and everybody else was like, I really need to go to bed. I'm so tired. And I was full of energy. Um, and the main thing I think with weddings or and we'll probably discuss this throughout the, the talk is that like when you go out, the main thing is to make sure you actually enjoy it and have fun and, you know, be more active and get up. And if I sit down and I'm just talking kind of, you know, to people, I, I find myself getting a bit tired and a bit bored whereas if I get up and make myself like dance and you know nearly entertain myself I suppose and um, that helps me to enjoy it more so the wedding like I didn't leave the dance for all night um, mm. and yeah I like I loved it it was actually a lot easier than I thought yeah I was actually home around this time yeah a bit 10 months ago for uh, I think like two weddings and I hadn't been drinking that much in, in the few years prior to it either. And I knew that I had these weddings coming up, but I, I got, everyone keeps get, thinking that it's driving that I'm saying, but I got jiving, you know, jiving dance. Oh, yeah. I got those lessons while, while I was at home the last few times because I wouldn't have got up dancing otherwise when, when I was sober. So I started, I got a few lessons the last couple of times I was at home. And then when I came to the weddings, then and I wasn't drinking. I was still able to have a good time because only because I was able to dance. Like you said, if I was, if you're, if you're sitting down there at one of those tables and yeah, someone will come over and start burning the ear off you and uh, yeah, you're better off keeping active. Yeah. You just want to go. And then a friend of mine, actually, um, a guy we were on um, the solar farms with, I hadn't seen him since I had said I'd given up alcohol. So he only knew me as like drinking. Um, and then the day after the wedding, then he, him and all his friends came to the wedding too. And the day after he texted me and he said, God, I was really unsure when I heard that like you didn't drink alcohol anymore, but like you were still good crack. And I, I was like, I totally took it as a compliment. Like I knew that he meant it in a good way. Um, mm. But I was glad because I was like, it is, it is still possible. You just probably don't realize it till you, you know, let yourself, you know, experience it. Mm. And what about uh, social pressure, like from friends, family back home or even here? Have you had any of that? <laughs> No, to be honest, like I'm um, my parents don't drink that much. Um, and even when, you know, we were growing up and everything, they always tried to get us to like respect alcohol and they wanted us to drink like wine with them at the table or, you know, enjoy the taste of it. Whereas I went the whole opposite, like that binge teenage drinking. You were um, the bottle after them then after. Yeah. And the naggins and the fields and all those kind of things, because that's what everybody else did. Um, and it wasn't, I didn't think I was doing any different because all my friends were doing it. Um, but now my, my, I feel no pressure whatsoever. Like, and genuinely my friends respect that I've made that decision. Um, they know I'm not going to be the last one standing on a night out. Um, they, they know as well that I'd probably 
probably give them a lift home if I am still there um, mm. or a lift to the venue. So it probably has its benefits in that way. Um, but no, we are like, I've been so lucky. And again, when I do go home to Ireland, the majority of the girls are, you know, have families and things now. So um, the social scene is more like, you know, going for coffees and and same here as well. Um, our social scene now is like going to the ice baths or, you know, going down to the beach or sunrises. Um, and that comes with age. You know, I, I think that comes with age regardless of whether I was drinking or not as well. Yeah, 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 true, true. So uh, for people listening who are afraid they might lose friends if they if they do give up alcohol, what would you say to them? That's a really good question. Um, and I think it's like you're very impressionable when you are younger, but I think you know yourself a lot more as you age and as you travel and, you know, as you're more content with who you are in your own skin and your decisions. Um, and I think it goes without saying that if someone is to question you and your decisions, then they're not somebody who, you know, respects your decision or is a good friend. Um, and oftentimes when the people that the people who question you on not drinking are the people who would probably never be able to do it themselves or it really intimidates them that you have actually, you know, gone through with it or you're happy with your decision. Um, like th that's what happens most of the time. If your friends are your really good friends, they won't care regardless. They're going to be having their own fun. So it doesn't bother them. Um, but I'm really lucky. I personally have never experienced that. So, um, yeah. But if if they were to do that, then I don't think they're a good friend. Mm, mm. Yeah, and I totally agree with you about what you said there about the person who is giving someone else a hard time for not drinking. It's definitely them showing their insecurity about a sober person in the corner uh, and them not being able to do it. Yeah. And I actually like in not in relation to alcohol, but I heard that recently in relation to running too. Um, you know, there's enough obviously running is like our fitness is a craze at the moment and people are doing half marathons and marathons, people are saying, Oh God, I'd never be able to run. Like that running is bad for your knees and bad for your hips. But oftentimes it's an insecurity in them that they they feel they mightn't be able to do it. And I feel the same about alcohol that people who question it are the people who I think would struggle to go through it themselves. Yeah, right. Nice. Okay, thanks a million for that, Hazel. We'll uh, we'll move on to Ali. Um, how are you doing, Ali? Good. Um, good. How are you? Not too bad. I didn't actually say to Hazel to give herself an introduction. I only realised afterwards, so I'll, I'll give you the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, uh, Ali is my name. Um, thanks very much, Kyle and Una and the ISA for inviting me on. Um, uh, very happy to be here, and hopefully someone listening could uh relate with something and help them out some way um yeah so ali i've been in sydney in australia 12 year 12 and a half years sydney about eight and um yeah i don't know any questions nice okay so i suppose the first one just the uh, same as hazel can you tell us a bit about your own story with alcohol um i suppose my story with alcohol is the same pretty much the same as hazel 14 15 probably cans of bulmers going to a nightclub usual stuff um jumping over the back wall or in the front jumping door? over it well yeah trying to get someone to get you in the front door if you could <laughs> <laughs> see if you could see if to get someone someone would get you in um so that was that it was harmless enough at the start um the usual yeah just usual just drinking up to teenage years didn't really drink all that much when i was like 17 18 19 um never really done sunday sessions just played football hurling all that sort of stuff saturday nights um and then i suppose as as i moved away and started working working in construction and uh, long days and that that's probably when i started probably drinking a bit more so traveling around and just hang around different circles of people that sort of glorified drinking more than when i was sort of growing growing up it was like we were, we were involved with like sports a lot and I enjoyed that side of things and probably didn't want to get caught up in the pub. I didn't find much interest in it at that age. Yeah, right. So it was just a different environment and different social uh, the circles. Would you yeah, the that? circles changed. I went from like playing, um, like really enjoying it, <clears throat> really enjoying getting away. We play like hurling in, in football and uh, we get away like just doing good things. But um, as that sort of went and yeah, I went and trained as a carpenter and you got away. That wasn't too bad, actually. But then afterwards, when you get out into the world and you have to go working, and I suppose the recession that time, we went to Glasgow and it was long, hard days and um, Glasgow working for a few, two years. And it was just, I suppose the circle is there. It's a, big, it's a bit like um, Irish, it's big, heavy drinking sort of 
heavy drinking over there. So I was over there with a cousin, and that's where I probably started drinking a good bit more. Yeah, and right, right. Moved more towards Australia. So it wasn't really your your growing up that had the, the impact on. Uh... Um, you know, like my father was a big drinker. Like my father was a um was a really big drinker. So he he actually passed away quite young, probably from alcohol. So right. that would have had an effect that I never really didn't really like it. You know, I was around, I suppose, around the house a lot. You would see a lot of drinking and all that. But it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like Hazel's parents there. It was more like he'd bring you out and you'd, you'd, you'd either, you'd have to go drinking with him, maybe. Uh, it wouldn't be a glass of wine either. It'd be a, it'd be a few pints of Guinness and that sort of, that sort of stuff. So that's, um, yeah, I didn't really, didn't really like, like it. And I tried to get away, sort of do the other things, the sports, which, was what I never really had a ma- major fondness for alcohol when I was younger. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, so that was that was and probably the most most time where you would have would have seen it was went went to the mines, you know, and when I moved over to Perth in WA uh, WA in two thousand eleven, and that was the first taste of having like real like real good money. Like you know, before that we were the usual uh, Monday to Saturday working hard, finish at four o'clock maybe on a Saturday and. You know, you're nearly too fucking wrecked. You weren't going drinking all day Sunday, and even though you're younger, planning on going working, working all week again, it was just wasn't. It just wasn't an option. It was just the work was just too hard. But like when you went to part the work, we were in the mines four weeks at a time. You're coming back down with ten, twelve grand, and you're there in part city center. Like what do you do? <laughs> you have no friends there because everyone's away on different swings, working in the mines, and it's a uh, sort of like. I remember when I landed first, people would say, how could you spend, I spent two or three, four or five grand on drink. I'm like, no way I could you spend that. But you wouldn't be long getting into that. That's all you do, like in the week off, just meet up with the people you worked with all week and you end up drinking. And that, that slowly would develop into something that's, something that's fucking what you do. Yeah. like. Yeah, right. And how long did you, were you doing that in the swings uh, over Western Australia? Two and a half, two and a half years I'd done in the mines in WA. No way. And partying every swing you had off. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yes. pretty much partying. Yeah. Jesus. I live right beside no, no one you've given it up now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you went through some depression sessions over there. I wasn't too, I wasn't actually, you know, there was some good nights out of it too, but we were, I lived right across uh, from Dirty Nellies. And you know what, you sort of, when you didn't really have the friends group, you would, yeah. uh, you sort of call in and chat to the people behind the bar and have a few pints and maybe a few friends might come. You didn't, you didn't know what to do. Like, and you weren't sort of, uh, you know, you don't have the goals like well, I suppose what Hazel does now. The goals like you might do your marathon or you want to get in shape or you're doing the ice baths. Like we didn't have them circles because we were away four weeks at a time and like you know different group of free friends down every time. You might meet them. What do you do? You don't. You know that was that, how many years ago is that? That's almost ten years ago now. Mm, four yeah, yeah. years ago, like it's um so like the ice baths and all that sort of stuff isn't wasn't wasn't back then as you met someone for a pint and wherever Tuesday night there was a different night club open Wednesday night there was a different because it's a mine in town you know so that's mm. the way that that went and then I suppose I moved over to Sydney after that and that's that's a that's a, just a different ball game altogether mm, yeah 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 right so Ali for, for some people alcohol can serve as, as a crutch to soothe us when we're low or down or feeling any sort of n- negative emotions really do you think that uh, was why why you were drinking so much at the time, or did it ever provide a sense of escapism for you? Um, it did, but not not at that time. I was probably be, I was younger, and it was more for the fun. There was times that it would have probably depressed the shit out of me, but more that was just fun and just drinking all, and never really got down too much over it. Uh, I suppose it would have in the past, like I suppose the last two or two years ago, went through a big. Big, big thing with work, and uh, we lost a lot of money. A company went liquidated that owed us, so that was a very hard time. And I say I lent on alcohol that time, a uh, very hard, very hard period. So, um, decided, decided after that, I got some some help, like um, not not only for alcohol, it was a lot of different stuff that went on at that time. It was very tough, so ended up like seeing someone, and um, then I I tried to get away from it from the alcohol, and then I just said, you know what, Christmas. I was at home at Christmas, and then I seen um. I suppose I've seen a few people who would have would have um respected like and they're sort of they weren't their, their brain was they're only 55 or 60 but they weren't functioning what you'd see someone in in Bondi or Kudji going for a swim you know it was just like fucking hell I I left here well 12 13 years ago I could have a conversation with you now you're sitting at a bar stool and you're fucking fried you don't even know that I was the <laughs> young kid that lived right beside you for fucking 
20 years and I just said to myself, fuck this, I don't want, I don't want to end up like this. So I decided to do a year, I decided then to do a year. I'm a bit probably different than Hazel. I need that goal or I, I can't do it week by week or it just doesn't work. So yeah, I set right. the year goal and um, I actually have a wedding coming up now in four weeks time. And then I've decided now I don't, I'm not, I just not, I'm not going drinking, you know. For how long, I don't know, but I'm not drinking for this trip home because just like the payoff of being a, enjoying the wedding and having a good time and be a, I'm a best man for my cousin and doing all this good stuff for the sake of going to a stag and drinking and all this shit. Like, like, is he really going to want me to drink that much at a stag that I'll ruin the whole, that I'll just feel shit for the whole holiday like I've done over a year of alcohol and I don't like, I'm competitive. I don't like going back to zero on the top either, so. Yeah, right. So, so you're going to stay off it for the stag and the wedding. Yeah, right? no, I'll stay it off for the whole trip back home. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Probably, like, probably it'll be a long term thing if I do go back at all. Like, but mm. I, I don't know. Who knows? Have, uh, do, 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 do you want a number for a, a jiving instructor? I, I'm actually really good at jiving. So, I don't oh, it's not great. You don't even need to. <laughs> you're, you're ahead of the game. I show you a thing. I do. <laughs> dance off. That was, I, that's one thing I did get from drinking. I wasn't afraid of the dance for and uh, still not. So, it's grand. Yeah right now. Well, that's good. Uh, it's definitely good when you can when you can dance sober. Because when I when I stopped drinking, that was definitely one thing that I struggled with. Was like I I'd be the first one out on the dance floor when I was drunk or whatever. And then the next thing it comes to being sober, and I'd be no way would I go out and dance. So the, for me anyway, that was huge. Just being able to have the confidence to go out on the dance floor and it, just getting those lessons definitely did help. I just seen Catherine put in there. I've done a month or two. Um, that's something I've done over the last couple of years. It's like, you know, Sydney, I've done the month, I've done the two months, I've done the four months, done the dry July, it was the biggest thing in the world one time. And like, then I've done the three months, but like, you know what I mean? Like you're holding on, I think you hold on to something. I was saying, oh, I'll, if what happens if I meet someone I want a glass of wine with them or if I meet a good fella, old fella from home and I want a pint of Guinness, held on to that shit for ages and it just ended up being like, fuck, like, you know, you're holding on to this, like, I'm sure Hazel can relate to that, like, if you meet a girl and have that glass of wine and that lovely chat, but, like, fuck it, if they're good friends, they'll have, they'll, they'll have a coffee with you, you know, so I just found that was, that was interesting for me, I'd done it one month and two months, three months, a few times, but then, then just, I think that making the decision is the biggest thing for the long term. Yeah, right, good on you, good man. Okay, so, Next question. If you were to put yourself back into the younger shoes of Ollie, what was the number thing that stopped him from drinking? What was the... Stopped him, sorry, stopped him from... Yeah. So what was the number one thing that, that stopped you, you from uh, giving up drink? That, probably that thing. Um, I've got good, like, probably a good few old school values. And if I met a fellow who wanted a chat and wanted a pint, that would be one of the things that would have said, you know what, I won't because I might hurt his feelings because he might want to have that pint of Guinness in a chat, either a friend or someone's father who came to Australia and meet him for a pint where they wouldn't understand that for me, it was like, don't like, don't disrespect them by not having a drink with them. Mm. Or if you went out to what, but now for dinner with a woman or something, like you want to have a glass of wine, they're going to think you're like probably some sort of a mad addict or something. If you get, if you don't do stuff like that or a fucking nut job, but yeah, uh, Oh. But like I think I think it was Hazel that said it earlier about like if they're if they're if they're for you they'll respect it. Even actually I was actually at work today. We were working uh, out on what was it Sydney Metro, and I said it to one of the traffic controllers. She was like she was out. Oh no, she I think she was out at the weekend, and she was like, "Well, were, were you out?" And I was like, "No, I don't drink." What? Fucking hell! She was like, "You're the only sensible Irish man around." She said, and I was like, oh, "I'd say there's a few more around you, just hanging out in the wrong places." You want to go for nice chat? <laughs> <laughs> um, Hazel, same question for you. So, if the, if you could say uh, go back into your younger self, what uh, what was the number one thing stopping you from giving up? I think people's perception. Um, I was very like, I I don't know if I go as strong as to say I'm a sheep, but like at that time because everybody else was drinking like I did too. Um, and again, I didn't really see it as a major problem until like the hangovers were just like so difficult to overcome. And then I think as you get older, they just get worse. Um, 
But what I would like say to my if my younger self, I would be, you know, to try and set limits more than anything. And um, like I'm always saying that, you know, it's not I think Ollie would agree with this, too. It's not a preacher to say like that giving up alcohol is going to solve all of your like, the you know, your mental health or your problems or what's going on in your life right now. And um, but more to know, like your limits, like when's the one that's, a, that's the one too many. And that was what my problem was. I was like, I know the one too many and I'm going to keep going. And um, mm. I was horrendous for shots um I was the one bringing out the tray of shots and like I was if anybody else didn't drink theirs that I bought for them um I would drink theirs so I would hate to see things going to waste you know um so money. that was <laughs> that was where I came from I was probably just a Christmas there when we were away and um I was out with a gang on Christmas Eve and they came out with shots and I felt a serious sense of like deja vu um and it was probably the first time I felt like a bit of FOMO I was like god I re- remember when I used to be part of this but I definitely Definitely didn't feel formal when I saw them later on. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would say that just ma- majorly to know your limits, like know when you've had enough. Um, and also I think a major thing is like that we don't go out to like it's young people are not rare to go out to drink to enjoy or to enjoy the company or things like that. Everyone goes out to drink to get drunk. Um, and I think distinguishing between that at a younger age would be extremely helpful um, going forward because there's not that, you know, like it's when say like there's a match on here or, you know, anything got to do with sport or socially alcohol is related to everything but if you knew that like you had your two or three points you've had enough you're going to go home because you've worked tomorrow and um, you know I think that that knowing your limits could be very helpful if you knew that a bit earlier on in life mm-hmm. yeah I personally couldn't uh, d- go for two or three like it was uh, even though I'd say it to myself beforehand like say after work on a Friday right the lads are going we'll just have one or two we're driving so we, we have to and but it, after the second one it's like a different person making the decision because it's only after the second one, well, for me anyways, that it started to feel good. And it's like, oh, fuck, I may as well have one more. And now, but I've had three now, sure. I may as well park the youth up for the night. I'll have a few more. And next thing you're in scruffy yeah. at five o'clock that night and I visit. Yeah. But then I think in a sense, it's good that you said that there about like the fact that you did park up the youth because there's probably a whole other conversation. But like, yeah. you know, I think as well, drink driving, from being Irish, we have been conditioned that like we have zero tolerance in Ireland. So therefore, like, you know, drink driving is an absolute no, no. So you're either bringing your car and you're not drinking that night or you're going out. And then if you've had a couple of drinks, you leave the car and you don't dare get into the car. Well, I would hope that people would be like that. Um, whereas I think in Australia, because they have a different you know, rules in terms of that and their tolerance of it, that I think things go a little bit like things get a little bit wavy when it comes mm. to that over here. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so if you decided to, if you say, decided to yourself that, you know what, I've been sober for long enough, I'm going to go back drinking again, and you started drinking every weekend again, how how would your life change from what it is now? Either of you can answer, whichever one wants to go first. No, no fighting now. Um, Ali, you go first. You go first. <laughs> oh, how would my life change if I was drinking? Yeah, so compared to what it is now, after you've been off it for so long, if, if you went back on it, what, what, how would your life change? Uh, definitely not for the better, anyways. Um, I don't know what way to put it. I, I, I have a lot of stuff going on at the weekends now, like so it'd be fine to hard fit in, to be honest. Mm. Um, I think this wellness is nearly as expensive, though. That's <laughs> what we think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it so, is but at least it feels better though yeah no for sure look i i don't i am um, like i like everything is just going better like my like my friendships i've got like a really good group of friends and i just don't think i'd be the, the same my work is a lot clearer a lot calmer um our work is going a lot better um i just don't think it'd have any way of a positive effect and like you know I've like I've, my plans are probably clearer and better than they've ever been um, like personal goals enjoying a holiday like before that I was I suppose for all my other years it was like I wouldn't do things because I'm like you know you might you might book something because you were feeling shit and then you'd spend so much money drinking and that you would have wouldn't bother have the surplus money to do to look forward to going to something like where now you can sort of have some like I'm looking forward to going home now like you know I'm not looking forward to 
like I'm looking forward to this stag do, but I'm not looking forward to getting absolutely fucked up in it. Like it's mm. a, like I'm just looking looking forward to actually the whole time spending time with my family. It's not revolved around let's how fucking let's how drunk I'm going to get at uh let's how let's how messed up we can get at the stag do. And that's like, you know, the whole important thing about for me going home this time is going to the wedding and spending time with family and like, you know, because we live far away from home, I suppose spending that spend that quality time and being present there with them when you're when you are at home and rather than like coming in coming in for the dinner and going out drinking all every day of that you're home you know not spending any time so i yeah i don't know if i've answered that absolutely i yeah, know for sure man. no totally um, like spending more quality time you, you'll, you'll have a better memory of time at home then as well versus have a bit of over yeah yeah that's it like it's, it's i think it is that you glorify like glorify like stag do's and hen do's and all this like good fun yeah but like there's no word of all the the hangover and all the other bad stuff that have like you know mm. yeah, so it's it's a, yeah look at the, yeah so that's it i know it's i suppose it Appreciate wouldn't change it. too much for the it wouldn't change too much for the positive to be honest bear yeah. having bear having maybe a good like a drink or someone with an older person in your family who doesn't can't understand that you don't think so. uh, don't be hanging on to that excuse now leave that, oh, that one's gone. <laughs> Is what about yourself? Um, I feel like I would be going backwards, um, like with my life and maybe my lifestyle if I was to um go back to that way. Um, I feel so much more present, like in when I'm in the company of other people. Um, and then I feel a lot clearer in like my thoughts and in my values and um I think in my decisions as well um and that I don't have to think at a weekend oh well you know I can't go down to the I'm gonna I can't go down to the beach today because I'm dying and you know it's mm. too hot outside like we live in this amazing country um and we're so fortunate with so much on our doorstep that if I I feel like if I was you know to be hung over on a Sunday now that it would like I would lose days rather than gain them um and then with my career as well like be, being a PT I have girls who come into me in a Monday morning um and with you know their stories on their weekend and I am picking them up and I don't think it would work well if they were trying to pick me up too um and yeah I think as, as well I think a lot of the time it's like just trying to guide people on like the benefits of reducing your alcohol or the benefits of having a weekend where you don't drink and um, that there's so much more you can do you know there's you can be, like make so much better use of your time and um, you can fit so much more in um, and you get your to me I think you get your weekends back like you get you know really to make value of your time yeah for sure and i can definitely relate to that as well like uh, it's you're so much more productive yeah. like, and if you have goals you're clear-headed about about reaching them whereas if you un even unintentionally go out on a saturday night like your goals just they're gone they're 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 non-existent because you just your feeling shit comes before them yeah so Last question for both of you. What advice would you give to somebody who is just starting to have that internal chat with themselves about giving up alcohol? Like Wally. <laughs> um, what I would say is to, um, first of all, I, I definitely think it's difficult to go from, like, to go cold turkey. Um, if you are on that kind of you know way of thinking I would say definitely think of reducing your alcohol intake um so whether that's like going on a night out and setting yourself a limit or you know challenging yourself and going on the night out um the two things that I think when you go on a night out is firstly you don't need to broadcast it and tell everybody that you're not drinking um initially I think when you when you are thinking about it because then you're like welcoming in all the feedback and sometimes you absorb that and it's actually then hard to stick with your decision um so I think for the most part like say nothing like at the start because it's no one else's business but your own um and then secondly for me is when I go out and I don't drink um and I always make sure to have a glass in my hand because then people think you're drinking and they don't know any different um until you are comfortable with your decision um then I think you know you don't ha have to explain yourself to anybody because you know you are confident enough in you know the decision that you've made um and it's no harm every now and then to you know to have a weekend where you don't drink um or instead 
instead of, you know, what you would do instead of going drinking, go do, you know, do another activity or organize something for the following morning so that you have something to look, to look forward to. Um, because oftentimes when you like excessively drink as well, you know, food comes into play as well. So you're going for your takeaway afterwards and then the following morning you want to just gorge on any food that's going to absorb all of this guilt that you're feeling. Um, so, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand, like the alcohol with the food. So, um, yeah, I would say definitely make sure, you know, keep it to yourself. You don't have to, you know, announce it to anybody. And secondly, to know your limits and, um, you know, have a drink in your hand if you do go out and you want to, um, you, you want to just, you know, be happy in your own decision. Yeah, nice. Good on you. And Ali, same to you. What was that question again? So if somebody was just about to have the chat with themselves about giving up alcohol, yeah, what would you, what advice would you give them? Well, my, I suppose my advice is, is, is look at someone who you want to become and then look at someone who you don't want to become. Uh, I found when you look at someone who drinks a lot and who's only, like, I'll actually speak from experience. My own father, he was a 55, but he was completely someone who I don't want to end up like very unhealthy looking when he passed away. So like I'd look at something like that for me, I think it's, it's a good, it's a good kickstarter. And then when you look at, I suppose you, like I was on a little bit this morning and there's guys there 75, 70 years old swimming to, I like can't swim two miles, but like they're swimming out. So maybe, maybe you might do that, but you've probably a better chance if you model themselves off their lifestyle habits and what they do rather than, you know, someone who you don't want to become. So um, that's what that's what I find is a good thing. And then for I suppose for the drinking in the pub, I usually have a sort of a three stage a three stage thing. So if I'm around really easy company, I'll just have my uh, sparkling waters and all that sort of stuff. And then there's like after that, it'll be like the glass of the glass of coke and the sprite if it's a bit more challenging. And then if you're in full fucking alcoholic territory, <laughs> just drink the uh, zeros, which is grand as well. So that's that's what I sort of uh, sort of have that sort of three stage thing. And then if it's then if it's too much um, mentalness going on, I just get out, uh, get out, get out and uh, do whatever I want to do then. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Good on you. That's actually a realization that I had as well a few years ago. Like anyone that I looked up to. That Well, actually, that's wrong. Well, the people I looked up to when I was in my young adult years as in early 20s were alcoholics like people that were drinking every weekend I, I really did genuinely think they were the bee's knees like anytime I seen my father happy he was drunk uh, or else after winning something from the bookies so yeah it took me a while to realize that people that were successful not a, it's a generalization but most people that were successful and that were, had grown to, to be genuine good people they, 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 their alcohol intake was quite low yeah and going back to the advice as well i think hazel you you mentioned about having plans for, for the following day because like there's it's very hard to start lowering your alcoholic consumption when most of your friends are in the pub and you you, you feel like there's nothing else to do like even if it requires a care but driving to a national park and having a, a hike planned or just having something else to do on the Sunday. Cause otherwise you're just getting FOMO and you're seeing all the Snapchats and Instagram stories. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it makes it even harder. So thanks a million guys. That they're all my questions. Uh, we have a couple of questions here from the audience. So have either of you, that's not yeah have either of you been in a situation where you've thought i could do with a drink and what have you done instead for, for me it. no i i personally haven't um the i think people think maybe the weddings would be um more like challenging um but i i definitely enjoyed them a lot more um and it's funny we, we went to the whistling donkeys um a couple of weeks ago here in sydney and before we went, the, like now my friends totally accept they don't don't care at all, and they're they're delighted, and um, that I brought them all the way over to um the Enmore. But um, we before we went, one of them said to me, you know, Hazel, like I know you haven't been drinking, and that's great, and you're brilliant, but um, like the whistling donkeys is going to be tough because like everyone's just going to be like jumping around the place, and it's going to be wild, and I think it's going to be your most challenging night. And um, I had the time of my life. Like it was just brilliant because you feed off other people's energy. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and yeah, I had a brilliant time at the music was like, we we're up on our feet the whole time. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And probably what people would thought would have been difficult actually turned out to be a great night. Um, and again, it's all in your mindset. Like it's all in how you think about it before you go. Um, so yeah, for me personally, I haven't been swayed. Mm. And even that goal, what that came up for me there was the dancing part again. Yeah. Like actually taking the step to get out on the dance floor and start moving because once you start moving and bouncing around and the, the energy starts flowing, like you actually do get out of your head and down into your body. But when you're thinking, fuck, I'm going to look like an idiot, you know, if I start dancing, everyone's going to be watching me. Then it's it's very hard to, or very easy to get stuck in that mindset then too and not enjoy the concert at all. Yeah. And can I just say, like, boys, I don't I don't know how to jive. That's maybe a, a next on my list. Um, I don't know how to jive, nor am I Beyonce either. So, like, I'm not I'm not claiming to be a great dancer, but um, I, I, I care less. Like, I don't care. Like, cause, because half the people, even if they are drinking, they're not that great dancers either. So, yeah, you know, I yeah. but I just I care less. I'll show you how to drive, Hazel. Thanks very much, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> and Ali, what about yourself? Have you been in that situation? Um, not really. I suppose the the first biggest toughest one was felt a bit of anxiety. Was at that I was at that Lansdowne lunch last year, and it was just a lot, a lot of people, and it was like into PJ O'Brien's afterwards. And I was it was only I suppose three months, and I was like, fuck. It was just like it was just too much. It was just it was just too many, too many, too much stuff going on. I was like, fuck. I couldn't, and um, I don't know if it's the right answer, but I ran away. I know I just went home. I just said, "Fuck it, I, I just can't, I can't be here any long. I didn't want to drink. I just felt shit being there. You know, that was more of it. Yeah, uh, I can't say I was like I want to go to the bar. It just didn't feel like it. Just didn't feel fucking good being mm. there. It was grand during the day, but then as the evening went on, I'm like, Jesus, just too many. It probably got messy as well, did it? Yeah, messy. It was just messy. It was just like, yeah, just slobbering and. Like just a bit, yeah, just a bit too. Like no harm anyone. I don't mind. I chat to anyone who's drunk, and I was just like the whole, but the whole pub was just like full, and it was just stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff like that. That's that's what it, that's what I find not hard. I just doesn't really. I just don't want to be there. That's all. I know what you mean. Yeah. And that probably would have been the easiest time to give in, in a sense. You know, like what you did was the right thing for you. Um, mm. like you could have easily been like, you know what, fuck, I'll go get a double, like at the bar and I catch up, which would have been possibly what like people would have done in the past whereas actually you took yourself out of the situation because it suited you better so I think hats off to you yeah I put a bet on it though at the start of the year so I sort of <laughs> <laughs> I put a bet on it at my aunt my auntie I have, I have two other brothers but we said but of course they were just after finishing we're all finished Christmas so we put a good bit of money on it but like but I don't think they'll ever pay a bet but I I, I pay my bets <laughs> and my auntie said to me well you have to go the whole year if they do give up and I said John fuck it I will as well so yeah, that's another way of doing it. That's I another way. That's another old trick. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you all the tricks. <laughs> nice. So have you any good uh, recommendations for books or podcasts regarding alcohol-free lifestyle? I actually did read one a few years ago. It's called alcohol this, this Naked Mind. This na uh actually, you guys... Uh, say if you have there, and I'll, I'll Google the one. App. I'll put I, it use, in the chat. I use an app, um, the I am sober app. I find it great because it gives you milestones and a uh, little inspiration, and you can set 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 little goals of why you're waiting sober, and you can set the date back, and you can put in the why you're doing it and what you want to achieve. It's really good, and it's like if you're a bit competitive, it'll it'll um, it does a counter, so it's good. Um, I haven't really like um podcast. There's a guy. His name's Scott Thomas. He has a podcast called Learning as I Go. Um, and he is to be like proper English party boy, like on that social scene in the UK. And he has done a lot of um podcasts on it. Um, and also another girl has done a podcast. Her name's Millie McIntosh. She used to be in Made in Chelsea. Um, and she did one about not not drinking, and it's like everybody said it's raving um, reviews. Um, and then needless to say, I think um like Stephen Daniel Daniels who started off like Dano who started off a line and um, fifty six coaching. I think what he is doing 
is phenomenal because I think there's a real gap in the market for it, particularly um abroad. Like and the fact that he can go online with it is even better. So he can, you know, transcend wherever he goes in the world. But I think with something like that in Sydney, particularly like in the construction, the sport, and then for men as well. And I know he deals with women too. Um, but I think his coaching um is absolutely brilliant. And I think it's a great service to avail of. Um, if anybody maybe wants a little bit more um you know in-depth um instruction i think he'd be great yeah he's definitely getting some good results from what i've heard and seen yeah no that's um that's a good one i think with the uh, with the with the coaching i found what i found was very hard to go from here i don't know it's probably a bit easier i'd say for girls but to go from that group of guys that you go to the pub with to the guys that that don't go to the pub is there's a bit of an in between it's like fuck what do you do here? Because you neither hang out with them or you don't hang out with them. So you're trying to figure out where you're in no man's land for a while until you find where you're going. But I think that's where, like, with like to Stephen or someone like that, it is is probably good to help you get get over them. Yeah, you know. yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm probably lucky enough. I'm in them sort of like um self development sort of groups and that. So that was that was a really good help to make that bridge across. You know. Yeah. Nice. So someone sent me another message here saying. Do you feel any regret about your drinking? Now, I don't know if this is the things that you've done while you were drunk or general. I'm guessing it's general. Two minutes, I'll be back. You go first. Yeah, I'll go. go I'll ahead. go first. Um, I Well, in terms of do I regret ever drinking? No, to be honest, because I think like, I, like I, in, it's cheesy and all as you say, but like, I think it's really important that like not to have regrets in life because you can only learn from them. So um, would I feel as like content in myself now had I maybe not drank and gone through kind of hurdles along the way? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, so it definitely helped me to kind of dig deep and um, to make a decision for myself as well um, and to not be led by a crowd or, you know, to be happy with my decision. Um, so I don't personally regret it, no. Um, mm. And it served its purpose. I, I also have, have had some great times drinking too they weren't all doom and gloom um but for me I didn't actually enjoy the taste of alcohol I possibly should have mentioned that at the start um you know there's lots of people who like you know really enjoy the taste of like I red wine I don't know if that's true I don't know like <laughs> uh, because if you said like with alcohol free beer now uh, would someone who drinks 10 pints of alcohol beer drink 10 pints of alcohol free beer no no way would they or if, mm. if it was the same with wine they wouldn't drink the same amount of the the drink we'll say if it will do you know what i'm trying to say like without yeah it's not alcohol yeah so, well, fair enough uh, uh, there's uh, people that have the glass of wine with dinner okay fair enough like a, a, i'll give them that but i think that's a bit of an excuse when it comes to i just like the taste of it and yeah I get drunk yeah uh, yeah i i think you know with people who pair food like the pair red wine with like a good steak or fish with white wine um, I didn't personally like the taste of it. Like I was more into like sweet alcohol. So um, that part, like, and I don't drink like non-alcoholic drinks. If I go out now, I have like soda water and lime um, or I just like have Coke Zeros. Um, and that's enough for me, to be honest. Yeah, nice. Okay. Um, that question has gone back up into the chat now. So Ali, do you feel any regret about your drinking? Um no, I don't feel that. I think you have to be young before you're old and wise, like us. I know. Um, <laughs> I know. I don't regret it. I think um, look at it like you know. I think all, all the things like that that happen, you shape you a bit, and all them like sort of experiences you've been in. Some of the some friends I have, I probably would have never met them unless I was in the casino at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have some really good friends I've met over the years from being like. We're not promoting it, you know. We're, we're just. Uh... I know, <laughs> I know. I'm not, I go, I go now, but uh, no, just, it, uh, it. um, yeah. So I don't regret it. Um, uh, don't regret it. Um, definitely wished I'd probably give it up a bit earlier. Um, for like different goals I wanted to hit. I'm the same. I was just about to say the same. I I, I wish that I I gave it up sooner than I did because yeah. the, the learnings that I got from it were. Uh, you get them in a few years versus uh, yeah when it kept yeah, prolonging, yeah. prolonging, prolonging, prolonging. Definitely, yeah. I wish when I started, yeah, I wish I'd a little bit earlier would have been would have been nice. Um would have hit for more of them more of them grown up goals earlier, maybe. But um, <laughs> um but no, I definitely don't regret don't regret don't regret um drinking. Don't regret all the experiences, different places I've been. Um yeah, so 
Yeah, nice. Happy I don't anymore, but like definitely, definitely some I've had a had a good time. Good on you. Okay, I think we'll wrap it up at that. Um yeah, we leave it at that. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Ozzie, and everybody who uh, joined this, I hope you all got some good resources out of it. And if you think it's going to benefit anybody else down the line, as I said at the start, you, you mightn't have been here, but it's uh, it's going to be on YouTube and Spotify on our channel, Irish Support Agency. So, yeah, thanks very much. No